Right now, let's continue our conversation with our panel. First, joining me here on the Anchor Desk, political analyst and journalist Helen Aguirre. And Skyping in from Miami, community activist Raul Moss. To you both, thanks for your time tonight on Newsmax Prime. Now, Helen, before we get back to the presidential race, we've got to talk about the Supreme Court nominee. Let's listen to the reaction from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. The Senate will continue to observe the Biden rule so that the American people have a voice in this momentous decision. The American people may well elect a president who decides to nominate Judge Garland for Senate consideration. The next president may also nominate somebody very different. So what about this? The majority leader went on to say basically the president's just politicizing this. Well, there's no question, J.D., that you see that Joe Biden, when he was senator, had this idea that he was using against Republicans that it should wait, that the Senate, that the president should really wait before making a nomination. Because in the middle, in the middle of a political process, in the dead heat of dramatic presidential national politics, it's very difficult to be able to make the sound judgment for a nomination so important as to the Supreme Court, which is a lifelong nomination. It's fascinating that this is a appropriate and it works for the Democrats when a Democrat says it. But then, of course, we saw today that now Vice President Joe Biden is obviously agreeing and applauding President Obama's decision, even though it really goes against the Biden rule. Yeah, isn't it interesting how that works? Raul Moss, let's go to you on this and the whole approach of the Senate Republicans. Should they just shoot it down completely or should Charles Grassley hold hearings in the Judiciary Committee? We've got about a minute right now, Raul. I, I think, uh, you know, Judge Garland is absolutely the wrong person. Um, you know, the minute that his name was announced, I, you know, sort of went out on social media saying that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, his nomination is dead on arrival as soon as he gets to the Senate. That's exactly what Mitch McConnell said a few minutes later. And the reason I say that is for one very important reason. Um, you know, one of uh, Judge Scalia's signature um, decisions, if you will, on the Supreme Court was the Heller decision that he basically wrote the opinion for, reaffirming the Second Amendment right of individuals to keep and bear arms. Judge Garland, quite frankly, has been very uh, anti-gun. Um, he basically voted to try and stop Heller from getting to the Supreme Court. Uh, and and, and it figures, Raul, file. that the New York Times would call him a centrist after that. Listen, Raul, yeah. stay right where you are, because obviously we have more to discuss, more presidential politics, more politics in general, when we continue as Newsmax Prime continues. But I want you to know something. We're going to go, we are going to go all the way to Cleveland and secure the Republican nomination. Ohio Governor John Kasich speaking to his supporters last night after that win in his home state. You heard him say he's going to go right on to the convention in Cleveland and come away with the nomination. But in Florida, for Senator Marco Rubio, well, his future plans are uncleared. We know he suspended his presidential campaign, but what's next? Let's talk about that now as I'm joined on the Anchor Desk once again by journalist and political analyst Helen Aguirre and Skyping in from Miami once again, community activist Raul Mas. Uh, Helen, this loss for Marco Rubio was a substantial loss. There's no way to sugarcoat it. It was substantial. Out of 67 counties in the state of Florida, Marco Rubio lost 66. He did really well in Miami-Dade County, where you have the largest number of uh, Republicans, 350,000 Republicans, and he won over 109,000 votes there. But it was a huge, devastating loss outside of that particular county. And you just can't overestimate the fact that on top of that, the week before in four in a, the Super Tuesday primary prior, he didn't win one single delegate. And he did so poorly outside of Florida yesterday and all of the other states. It really was the appropriate call for him to suspend his campaign. Despite all the delegate math you might be, want to be creative with, there was just no way for him to go. 
Raul, we talked about it some last night in our coverage. Uh, what about the situation for Rubio? Some people talk about governor from Florida in two years running a campaign. You tend to take the longer view when it comes yeah, to Senator I, Rubio. I mentioned last night, I think he should uh, basically take a break from politics. You know, he's an attorney, uh, yet he's never really uh, practiced the law, as far as I can tell, for any considerable period of time. This might be the time to do it. He's got a terrific Rolodex. He's got a young family that he's got to, you know, feed and put through school. Um, now might be a good time to, you know, go and work for a big law firm and establish some credentials, make a little bit of money, and set yourself up for another opportunity down the road. I think governor two years from now is just, uh, you know, too soon in my humble opinion. But, you know, Marco's an ambitious young man. Uh, this presidential race was obviously a bridge too far for him. Uh, and I hope that this time around he uh, takes a deep breath, reflects on it, and maybe uh, uh, chills out for a while. You know, J.D., former Florida Governor Charlie Crist, who was first a Republican, then a Democrat, and then an Independent, is now running for Congress in the Tampa Bay area. And if you can believe the polls, it looks like he might do really well and go to Congress. If he can reincarnate himself, Marco Rubio can find an avenue to get through back into politics as well. Well, those of us who have served in elective office, when people ask us, we never say never. I, I can vouch for that. Uh, Helen, just one other thing. John Kasich took time away. He left the Congress. I served with him. And now he is Ohio's governor. His talk last night about going to the convention, do you think there's something to that? You know, it, it's interesting, but he would have to win every single state. There are 20 more primaries to go through, 20 more states. He'd have to win every single one in order to really be a strong contender. How likely is that? I don't know. After what we've seen, what Donald Trump has done, it's going to be enormously challenging. But what happens at the convention is going to be more than interesting. If it's not contested, there is going to be a lot of political maneuvering, to say the least. Oh, and we heard about that earlier in the program. Uh, both uh, you, Helen, and and Raul via Skype. Dick Morris was part of our election coverage last night. And Dick, taking a look at what Donald Trump accomplished, it, it's safe to say that our Newsmax TV political analyst was in awe. Let's listen. I think that this guy has a certain imperviousness to these negatives, uh, which, uh, which is very impressive. Uh, you just look at these results and your, your mouth is open and you gasp. Well, you can lose Texas and Florida Texas and Ohio to the native sons carry Florida uh, and not be dented in your move for the nomination. Raul, one of the reasons that uh, that Dick Morris was in awe, all those negative ads discussed earlier, they did not hurt Donald Trump last night in Florida. Absolutely not. I mean, the Republican Party and, um, you know, the detractors of Donald Trump have yet to find the kryptonite that's going to stop him, quite frankly. Um, and I think, listen, I mean, it was a tr tremendous showing. Um, you know, you would have expected Cruz to perhaps have picked up North Carolina. He didn't do it there. He didn't do it in Missouri. Uh, the latest numbers that I had seen were that basically um, Trump was ahead by about 1,726 votes. So he, he clinched a win in Missouri as well. Um, and I just don't see a, a path, quite frankly, for Governor Kasich. I mean, it's it's um, you know, I mean, this is the first state he's won, right? I mean, Marco Rubio had a better record than, than, than Kasich, and he's had to drop out. So what, now because John uh, Kasich wins uh, Ohio, being the governor of Ohio, uh, suddenly he thinks he has a path towards a nomination? I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Final 45 seconds to you, Helen. Are we going to see a brokered convention in Cleveland? Well, I think certainly there's going to be, a, if no one gets to 1,237 delegates, there's going to be a lot of contention as to what to do. There's no question that Donald Trump has negatives that are concerning to the GOP. But at the same time, he's a known entity. The reason that these negative ads don't stick is because the American public knows who he is and seems to be buying into that. And given that, I think it's difficult to be able to take that away from the person who has the highest number of delegates collected. Fair enough. We will have to end it there. Helen Aguirre right here on the anchor desk. Raul Moss via Skype from Miami. You both have our thanks. Now, 
You heard what Helen and Raul had to say about all those primaries last night, about Donald Trump and the prospect of a brokered convention. We'd love to get your comments. And you can send your comments to me at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. When we come back, a former Supreme Court clerk, Hannah Smith, on President Obama's nomination to the high court today. Stay with us.